What's up guys, GG Forex here. Welcome back to today's video. On today's video, we're gonna be talking about something that I've been getting questions a lot about, okay? It's about taxes. Do you pay taxes in Forex? When you're spread betting, what's the difference between spread betting, CFDs, which is contracts for difference, right? These questions come up a lot and I can understand why people wanna ask these questions because they are unsure. They're on the internet, you're getting a bunch of different answers and you're getting misinformation, you're, you're not really 100%, you're going into something and you don't want to be done by HMRC. Obviously this tax is about UK tax only, I'm from the UK, obviously if I'm from a different country, then you have to do the research in your country. But from wherever you are in the world, I do highly recommend that you seek professional advice, okay? I'm not a professional financial advisor. This is just what I know, so I could be wrong. Information changes, the tax game changes all the time, especially in the UK. People find loopholes and HMRC fill them and then it's different again and again and again. So I do recommend you do see a proper accountant, someone who is specialized with traders as well, who understands trading. Because a lot of accounts out there don't understand the game. They're confused, they kind of have to do research themselves. They're not used to this sort of gambling i guess because spread betting is classed as gambling so there's a lot of confusion even in a professional game so i do recommend before we go any further in this video that you do seek professional advice tailored towards forex trading okay so without further ado let's just break down what sort of questions i've been asked and how i'm going to be trying to help you guys out in this particular subject so is spread betting tax free? How much tax do I pay? So, main question is, is spread betting tax free? Yes and no. Here's what I mean. So if you're spread betting, technically the government, UK government looks at it as gambling. So you don't pay any taxes on gambling wins. Okay, however, each individual is gonna have a different structure behind it, right? So. If you have a job, a nine to five, and you've got a, a small Forex account and you're on a spread betting account, so maybe you make 20 grand a year, you probably won't pay tax on that 20 grand a year because it will probably be classed as maybe a hobby, right? Again, I could be wrong. Let me know in the comment box below. This is just what I personally know. Again, times change, so let's just go with it, okay? However, if you've got a million pound trading account, right, and you can withdraw, I don't know, 100,000 a month, there is no way HMRC is gonna allow you to keep 100,000 of that a month and not pay tax on it, okay? This is not gonna happen. HMRC are gonna come down on you and destroy you. You're gonna get a nasty letter and a huge bill and you will get investigated, right? This, this is a serious problem, so do take this seriously, okay? So small players, not really making that much, not really a big worry on a small account, whilst they have a job that they're already paying tax on, yes, spread betting is free, but not for the big players, right? With a million pounds plus, maybe six figures and above, right? You can't take home that much money and not pay any tax, it's just not gonna happen, especially if that's your sole job. How much tax you pay is different for everyone, different circumstances. One, are you a sole trader? Are you a limited company? Because there's different things that you can write off. If you're a sole trader and you make 100,000 a year, there's no way you're not gonna pay taxes on that. You 100% will pay taxes on that. And it probably will be in the line of what you would pay normally. So if you had a 100,000 pound a year job, you'll probably take home 66,000 of that out of national insurance income tax, okay? So that's what you would actually take home. That will probably be the same for your trading. There's no way you're gonna not pay tax on that. It's different if you're a limited company. If you're a limited company, technically you are a business, right? And why would you go from being a sole trader to being a limited company? Well, there are many different reasons. Again, everyone has a different structure. Everyone's coming from a different point and everyone's gonna have different advantages to be either a sole trader or a limited company, right? Because people are gonna be at different stages. So. If you were just you on your own, you're not setting up a business, i.e. you're not making um, other income streams, so let's say you're not, I don't know, charging people to teach, or you've got some sort of like other income streams coming in to build, let's say a brand or a business or whatever, you're just a sole trader. So you're probably just gonna pay the normal rate. Sorry. 
But if you are a business, then technically you have business expenses. So you could pay for an office, you might have employees, you might have to buy computers, you know, you might have to pay for education, insurances, blah, blah, blah. All these things are business expenses that you can write off from the tax that you'd have to pay from your profits, right? Same thing with your losses in your trading account. You can technically, um, what's the technical word for it? Offset your losses. Right, so if you had, I don't know, 20,000 in losses that year, you can offset that onto your tax if you are a limited company. Again, I could be wrong, things might have changed, this is just what I know, okay? So those are the differences. Are you a sole trader, are you a limited company? You're gonna have different benefits and, or well, pros and cons for a sole trader, and you're gonna have pros and cons if you're a limited company. Either way, you have to tailor it for your situation of what you want to do. And the only way to find out which one is best for you is to go speak to a professional about it. Don't listen to a bloke on the internet, okay, who says, ah, oh, spread betting is tax free. It is and it isn't, depending on your personal situation and where you want to go along with your trading journey. But just don't bury your head in the sand in this. Seek professional advice. Don't wake stay awake at night thinking oh no I've, I've just withdrawn 50k into my account and you're worrying oh no what, what taxes have I got to pay because now HMRC are going to see 50 grand just been put in your account you haven't paid any taxes it needs to be explained it needs to be a paper trail otherwise you're going to get investigated and that's bad news another question I keep getting is crypto but I think I believe back in the day crypto taxes were non-existent there wasn't any <laughs> taxes on crypto back in the day now though because there's a lot of people making a lot of money from crypto there is a tax it's a straight 20 percent on your profits across the board no matter what it's just 20 percent so hmrc have tweaked their tax rules to make sure they are taking their piece of the pie out of the crypto game as well so let's say you make a million pounds out of crypto in a year hmrc are going to take 200k off of you Right, so that is the deal with crypto. I hope that has answered a few questions. If you're a sole trader, if you are a limited company, whichever one you're gonna do, you're gonna have different rules. There's gonna be ones that benefit you personally, ones that don't. If again, if you're just a one man band, you're trading on your own, um, that is your sole income. You you can write off some things but not as much if you're a, if you are a limited business and then you got capital gains tax as well so there's different ways that you can play the limited business as well so you could technically right you could technically let's say you start out as a sole trader you got a normal job and you churn your account compound interest it right let's say you start off with 10k for whatever you pass an ftmo challenge and then you take all those profits and put it into a personal account and you just compound interest that, right? You compound interest your personal account. You can build that account up to a million quid, right? And never pay any taxes because the taxes are only deductible when you personally withdraw that and put it into your bank account. So you could have millions of pounds in your trading account, make money with that millions of pounds in your trading account and you still won't get any tax because it's not real yet. Okay, so you can make a lot of money in your trading account and not pay tax. Because again, it's not realized profits until you actually withdraw it. So I hope that makes sense, right? But again, so you are either a sole trader or you are a limited company. You're going to have different reasons for being either one. Okay, there's going to be certain situations that benefit you as sole trader, there's going to be certain situations that benefit you as a limited company. So you might start off as a sole trader and then you might change your journey, develop and then you turn you what your knowledge is into a business and then you might go from a sole trader to a limited company and then you have different tax benefits for that. So what you want to make sure is are you paying the right amount of tax? Not the least, the right because if you get a letter from HMRC, which anyone can get, okay, you want to know that HMRC's uh, letter is going to pass through fine. You're not going to worry about anything. You're not going to get done for tax evasion. You know, you, you, everything's going to be checked. All the I's going to be dotted. All the T's going to be crossed. You know what I mean? So everything is squeaky clean. You've paid enough tax. You can then grow as a business. You ain't got to worry in the back of your head of, oh, 
I'm paid enough tax. Can I really afford to buy this because I haven't actually paid the tax man yet? You want to know that that side is covered so you can grow as a person and as a business. So again, please seek professional financial advice. I am not that guy, but I've been getting so many questions from you guys about this topic. I thought I needed to make a video about it from what I personally know. Again, I could be wrong. So double check these stats and figures change all the time, especially like I said, with the crypto, no tax before. Now you get 20% across the board. Okay, 20% across the board. So things change, HMRC change their rules, loopholes get shut, different ones get opened, I don't know, right? Okay, you walk, at the end of the day, you wanna be able to sleep at night knowing that you have your tax covered, no matter what challenges you, you can then go to your accountant, your professional team, to advisors, and take you through that step knowing that you've paid the right amount of tax. So you can sleep soundly at night, and focus on your trading. You don't want to be stressing about HMRC breaking down your door when you know, you've know you already got enough problems with psychology as it is in the trading game. So guys, I hope that clears it up. Spread betting is not tax free, depending on your situation. And only you know your situation. So again, hope you learned from this. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one because technically tomorrow, I will have my 10 minimum trading days done in FTMO, get my certificate, move on to my verification stage, and then hopefully get a good trade on EG because there is potentially a setup for Wednesday, Thursday next week, hopefully. So then I'll be able to take advantage of that and get my 5%. Fingers crossed. But until then, guys, love you all. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.